Like, hello, my name is Uwe Altmann from Pico Quine, Berlin, Germany. I'm here at the Times of Resonance course. I'm sitting here with Professor Joseph Lakovic from the University of Maryland. Uh, he's also the director of the Center of Fluorescence Spectroscopy. Joe, what inspired you to start the course in 1992 in Baltimore? I think the thing that inspired us to start the course was the many biological scientists that were shifting into fluorescence as their um, mode of measurement, both for fluorescence microscopy to learn about cellular systems and to learn the biophysical aspects of proteins. And in the center, we would have many users that would come in and they would ask us about doing, a, doing experiments. And we would pretty much explain the same thing over and over again. And it seemed to us that the most efficient thing, and it would be a service to the community, would be to have a professional level course where we described all of these principles in one place. And it turned out to be quite good because then many of our subsequent users uh, had attended the course and we could be more productive knowing the basics of fluorescence. And then of course you exported the course to Berlin where we have this here now. So where do you, do you see uh, in which research field time of fluorescence does help the most? Oh, as, as in exporting the course to Berlin, it really is a tremendous amount of work to put on a course, and it requires instruments as well. And uh, PicoQuant provides all of that for us, and it's, it's easier to do it here because we just have to show up as opposed to importing all the instruments over into the states and, and gathering all the people together. We do plan to bring it back to the states. Mm -hmm. In fact, we taught it about three years ago, but we taught it without the instrumentation hands-on component because that was, that was what we could do. Yeah. And um, the field of research, where do you think, like, like will it go? In which area of research the like, Chimes of Fluorescence will help most? Well, I think I'd like to answer that by going back about 30 years or so, uh, where fluorescence was really a backwater technology uh, practiced in very few labs, and most of the analytical measurements were done by radioactivity. And since that time, fluorescence has advanced so much that in the analytical labs, meaning the clinical labs, it's been replaced completely by fluorescence detection. Uh, on the uh, biophysics side and the cell side, um, f basically f f visible light microscopy gives you very little information. But fluorescence gives you information against a dark background on the cells because the fluorophores are much brighter. The fluorophores can be adjusted to obtain any type of information. It might be a pH information, oxygen content, calcium concentration. So things can be seen in the cell which otherwise are spectroscopically silent. And I think almost all cell imaging today is done by some type of fluorescence imaging. So what was then the most impressive moment of your like, research career since the time where you've been a PhD student at, at the lab of Gregorio Weber in Illinois? What was a really mm. striking moment, especially in terms of fluorescence? Um, I, I think the uh, striking moments are really only known in retrospect mm -hmm. uh, rather yeah. than, than at the time. In terms of impact, I think I'd like to mention two areas. One is the area of fluorescence lifetime imaging microscopy, FLIM. We actually coined that acronym in about 1988. At that time, because of the lack of electronics uh, that we have today in computers, it was virtually inconceivable that one could measure a lifetime at every point in a cell and create an image based on that. Uh, we came up with a way to do that back, back at that time. It was a clumsy way. It was an analog method. Uh, it was based on an imaging detector, but it proved the concept that you could create contrast based on lifetimes. And that concept now has been introduced into almost, well, the, probably the majority of laser scanning confocal microscopes have a FLIM option to them. And the FLIM is used uh, for FRED imaging and also things like ion imaging. So I think that had a, we're always pleased to see that that had, a, had an effect. even. And we sort of felt that was the case. We stopped our research in FLIM because we realized that the next step would be a time, time resolve measurements using time correlated photon counting rather than our approach. And we weren't prepared to uh, invest in that area. 
Can I mention a second? Sure, of course, please go ahead. Okay. I think, I think a second one is related to the most recent Nobel Prizes, mm -hmm. the super resolution microscopy. Because uh, back, I'm guessing it was the early 90s or the mid 90s, we had worked on an area called light quenching. Mm -hmm. And this is an area of using multiple laser pulses to manipulate the light beams and deplete the excited states. And in fact, Stefan Hell uh, helped us work on that back at that time. And now we, it's not called light quenching anymore, but it's being used in stead microscopy, which is super resolution. And I think this points to the value of basic research. You do a, a basic research problem, and if you've chosen the problem well, the results become applicable in other areas. So that's the big advantage of like time resolved measurement versus steady state is having this extra dimension in your measurement, getting more insight on, uh, yes, on the samples. Yes, I, I think it's, yeah, it's an, it's an enabling uh, technology. And for, for instance, if you put a fluorophore in a cell, what you see is where the fluorophore is. And frequently you want something, some more chemical information or some functional information. And we have probes that respond to lifetime, probes that respond to viscosity, probes that respond to proximity, which means we can create a contrast based on the chemical properties. You could create a microviscosity map in a cell if, if you wished. Uh, and this has only been made possible because of the advances in electronics uh, and computers that allow the rapid processing of information and the time resolve mode. Mm -hmm. Well, I thank you very much for this um, insight on time resolved spectroscopy. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Joe, for this interview. Oh, thank you for the opportunity.